So today I'm going to run through repairing LiPo's that have had the tabs ripped off them. So this happens to some people more than others because this happens when you crash quadcopters and airplanes and stuff and that is the tabs rip out of the cells. So the tabs in the cells, this part here, are made out of aluminium and then there's a steel section that is spot welded and you can see the pattern on there from where they've welded it and then the connectors are soldered to the steel or copper or whatever they've spot welded to the aluminium. So when it tears off, if it does what this one's done and tears the aluminium, you can't solder to aluminium and you can't reattach this. So this cell's dead, which makes this battery a write-off, which is always disappointing, especially when they're pretty new batteries. So what I'm going to go through is I've got this one that's done the same thing, and we'll go through cutting the old cell, well, Cut one of these batteries up, take one of the good cells, add them to this, and then make these two bat these two dead batteries into one good one. And this one cut up battery, with because there's three good cells in it, we should be able to fix three other batteries with it. So we'll keep all the spare bits. Generally, it's pretty easy to fix because the only ones that rip out are the major positive or negative ones. Because if you pull it by these wires, they just seem to break the balance leads rather than rip the tabs off. And it's also the, on these pair, it's both the positive sides, that should make our job easy. So the first thing we're going to do, as we've already done it on this one, is we've got to get a Stanley knife blade and extremely carefully cut all the insulation off the battery. We need to be really careful not to puncture the cells, because the LiPo cells are soft, and we will put the Stanley knife blade through them if we're not careful. The other thing we need to be wary of the whole time is not touching this onto any of the contacts. When we're putting the battery back together. Sometimes I try and save the sticker and put it back on just so I have the details, but all my batteries are the same, so I won't worry about it. But this piece of plastic, you should stick back on because that's there just as reinforcement to stop things puncturing the battery. So this you should definitely put aside and then stick it back on afterwards. Something that's interesting is this yellow tape is called Captain Tape or Captain Tape. And you see it a lot in aircraft because it's insulating tape, but it's like fire and heat resistant. I don't think they actually use it anymore because there's problems with it when you like vibrate it a lot. It fatigues and goes brittle and falls apart. But yeah, you'll see it a lot on if you watch how they do how they build it shows and stuff like that. You'll see when they're building aircraft a lot, all the wiring looms will always be wrapped in this clear yellow captain tape. So all we're trying to do is get to this cell here, which is the one with the contact ripped off it. So all that will be attached to this cell is our red lead and our blue balance lead. The red one has been removed for us, thankfully, by mass and momentum. Um, the blue one will have to desolder. So you want to always be careful not to put too much heat in. So we'll put the soldering iron on for the just long enough that we melt the solder. And then not much longer after that. So if your soldering iron's like mine, it's a bit crappy, you might actually be better off putting a bit of solder onto the soldering iron first and then, de then putting it onto here because the solder you put on first will help transfer the heat more efficiently and it'll come off quicker without having to put as much heat into the cell. So we've done that one, we can do the other one now. So once we've desoldered the wire, we need to remove the cell. The cells are double-sided taped together, and if you just try and force it apart, it'll probably pull the cell apart and damage it. So what you need to do is get some adhesive, something that'll dissolve the glue. I use this citrulline, CitroClean stuff, because it seems to dissolve glue nicely, but pretty much whatever your personal preference is. So we'll just try and split it open a little bit, and then get it into the gap so we can start dissolving the glue. It'll take a while for the glue to slowly get through, so don't rush it, just let it dissolve and slowly pull it apart as you can. So once we've got the cell separated, we need to cut here where it's attached to the other cell. Now these are spot welded together, 
So we need to cut it so the piece of steel is on the cell that we're keeping and not on the cell that we're getting rid of. Because the reason we're getting rid of it is because the other piece of metal is missing off it. This is probably where you're most likely to short it because if you short between here and here then that's the cell being shorted out and we don't want to do that because it could result in fire or explosion. Now this part of the tab is only aluminium so a pair of scissors should cut it fine. And then, there you go, one dead cell removed. So at this point what you could do is you could solder the red terminal straight to here and then you'll have a three cell LiPo that you can use, but if you use four cells and only want four cells then we'll continue with the other battery. No. Oh. So this one was actually not stuck on very well from the factory. So at this point we decide which one of these batteries is going to be the donator battery and which one's going to be the one we keep. So with the one we're going to use to donate, which I choose this one, we need to remove the next cell along as well. So we need to unsolder the next balance lead. Basically, basically all we're going to do is exactly what we did for the first cell, but we're just doing it again. So unsolder the balance lead that's connected to it. Now that we've split the cell off, we need to remember that this is the one we're adding to the old battery. So we've got the steel end here, and this one we need to cut, so we have the steel end on the cell that we're using. So this is our good donor cell. What we've got to do is solder it to this one. So what we're going to do now is work out which tab's positive and which tab's negative. So we get our multimeter, check the power at the tab and we're getting 3.8 volts and it's 3.8 volts positive which means this is the right way around so my red lead is positive and the black one's negative if I put the tabs if I put them the other way around you'll see we're getting negative 3.8 volts so that means that the multimeter goes the other way around so I'm just going to use a texter to mark this so we remember so there's positive and negative and then we'll check the same on the battery we should get, so that's negative, so it's this way around, so positive and negative. So the way these batteries are wired is in series and not in parallel. Wiring it in series, you get the same capacity, but you get more power for every cell. So each of these cells is 1,300 milliamps. So even though there's four of them, we still only get a total of 1,300 milliamps, but we get 14.8 volts instead of only 3.8. If they were wired up in parallel, then we'd have three times the capacity and the same voltage. So because it's in series, we need to solder this positive to that negative, and then this positive to this positive. So we'll put the piece of foam that we took out back in. We can put the battery, the cell, on the way around that it goes. And then because both our cells have the steel on there, we should be able to solder these two tabs together. Because the tabs don't really want to stay, I'm going to solder it and then just hold them down with these scissors just while they're cool. We really need to try and do this nicely so we don't get too much heat soaking into the battery. So we should have a nice solid joint between those two cells now and then we just solder the balance lead back to that tab. Once the balance lead's soldered on we can unsolder the old broken aluminium tab to this and then solder the wire to the new one. So we want to make sure that these are nice good looking shiny solder joints because this is going to be carrying the main current from our battery. Once the main lead's on we can put the balance lead back on. Once we've got the leads soldered on we're ready to get the cell checker out and see what we're getting as a reading. Here we go, moment of truth, see if our repairs worked. And there we go. So the cells are actually not too far out of balance. 
but obviously because one of these cells is from a different battery we're going to want to leave it to sit and balance for a while to get them all matched up before we try and charge it so ideally you want a battery balancer that uses the battery's power and not one that you have to charge the battery while you're balancing it so now that we know it works we'll get some more tape now I have more captain tape which is the orange tape we took off this is ideal because it's high temperature and you get a roll of it for a couple of dollars on eBay so you're probably better off buying this but you will probably get away with electrical tape if you just use that so we'll seal everything back up the way it's supposed to be put our plastic shield back on and then wrap the battery in a couple of layers of electrical tape just to give it some protection after the heat shrink we took off After it's wrapped in electrical tape, I like to give the battery one round of fiber reinforced gaffer tape because the silver makes it easier to find once it goes missing in the bushes and it helps protect it just a little bit more. Once we're done, we can give it a label again so we remember what it had in it. And then repaired so when we charge this battery next we're going to watch it for a while because just to make sure all the cells get along keep an eye on it while it charges and then ready to go flying <laughs>